too. All right, what's up, you guys? I'm back for another video, and today I'm continuing my thoughts on the Charn reboot. And this is part two. They've literally been in the discussion for about over a year, so. And now I'm bringing it back because not only have I watched a couple of manic videos, but also because the trailer just dropped for the pilot. And y'all, we I got some things to say. If you see my reaction video, probably in the sidebar, I'll probably leave a description and the link down below. Let me tell you, this reboot has been in developmental hell for the last five years. Like, I honestly don't know how they're able to do it. From January to man, within a span of five months, they were able to get a network to pick them up, get a pilot ordered, then they get season ordered, get a full cast, get on the fall schedule, film the first episode, and have a trailer out, including with, fa not fan art, but actual promo art, before upfronts to get on the fall lineup. I don't know how they did it, but poof, I don't know. Now, after watching this trailer, I had a lot of mixed emotions, okay? <laughs> basically, what I saw was the writers basically spark notes, spark notes styled a bunch of elements from the first four seasons and slamming it all into one pilot, okay? Now, let me go ahead and read the actual synopsis of the, you know, first episode or the first, like, synopsis of the actual season. I have it pulled up here. My goodness. I have it pulled up here on comicbook.com. Basically, all right, let me read it right here. This is what they presented at Umfront. Stronger today. That's what Marisol tells her daughters. Firebrand, social justice warrior, Melanie Malvera, and her sister, Fun Loving Maggie. As if the P name trend was not enough. <laughs> About their family, Mel's a grad student at Hilton University, studying in the women's studying department where her mom heads. Maggie is a freshman considering martial arts sorority, much to Mel's dismay, and going on again with her on again, off again boyfriend, Brian. I'll have more about that later. Then a shock and tragedy shatters their world and friends their sibling bond. Marisol dies in a horrific accident. Or was it? Three months later, we find Mel unable to accept the official explanation of their mother's death while Maggie accuses her of being morbidly obsessed. And then another huge shock shows up at their front door. Their older sister. Brilliant geneticist Macy, who their mother kept a secret all these years. Oh my god, I can't y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I had to be dramatic for it. Macy is new in town and doesn't know a soul except for Galvin, the cute fellow scientist who's been showing her around. Also, the guy that plays Galvin, our homie from Jumanji. Yep. Macy is eager to connect with Mel and Maggie, but Mel can't handle another shock and such her out. With the emotions of all three sisters running high, each of the girls suddenly exhibit impossible new abilities. Mel can freeze time. Maggie starts hearing other people's thoughts, and Macy has telekinetic powers. Oh boy, and it's it's still going, you guys. It's still going. But don't worry, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Oh, so says Harry Greenwood, who, as far as they know, is the office new chair of Women's Studies Department. When he gathers the three sisters together to reveal they actually are powerful witches, as their mother, as well as their mother. Sorry. And he's not really a professor. He's, wait for it, their white lighter. A witch's advisor and guide. <laughs> oh my god, I can't do this. I can't, guys. I'm almost done. Not only that, but Mel was right. Their mother's death was not an accident. She was murdered by unknown dark forces. It's a lot to take in. But ultimately, the sisters accept their new destiny as the charmed ones. And their new duty to protect humankind from demons that walk among us. One whom killed their mother. With the power of three, they are stronger together, even if they have no idea what they're really up against. Okay, let me just run through this one more time, okay? First off, they basically switched out a bunch of stuff from the first pilot, okay? Instead of the grandma dying, they have the sister, they have the mom dying first. And instead of having three sisters, we start with two. We find out we have a secret sister that their mom had. That their mom had a secret and never told them. And I guess they're paying, they're still keeping the absent dad storyline around because we don't know who their dad is. They don't know, show him. For all we know, he's either died or walked out. Then, <laughs> oh my god. 
then we have a switch of power. So instead of the youngest being, you know, seeing into the future, we have a reading minds. Like Phoebe's impact power she had for like a good quarter of the season six. Oh my goodness, man. Then we have a white lighter, a British guy who is undercover. <laughs> I can't, guys. This whole entire side of this for like the first episode is just, oh my god, I can't, I can't. This is just too much. Like, I swear, the fact that it even got picked up is just baffles me. And one of the writers is Jenny Ehrman from Jane the Virgin, and I love her. And she's taking time out of it, out of Jane the Virgin, to actually write this show, which kind of explains where season four went this year, which I have a lot to say in a separate video. Now, the cast, we have Madeline Montauk, 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 I'm probably not pronouncing this right. She's playing uh, Macy. We have Melanie Diaz. She's playing Mel. If you haven't seen her before, if you saw Fruitvale Station with Michael B. Jordan, she plays the girlfriend. And then we have Sarah Jeffrey. If you've seen her on Descendants, um, the TV movie on Disney, do you know who she is? Honestly, her acting Descendants is way more better than in this pilot. I, I honestly have to say that. Now, I wouldn't be <laughs> saying anything. Like, I wouldn't be saying anything this much if I hadn't watched Charm the last week. Not only that, but I've also watched several manic episodes kind of explaining how Charm's basically kind of suckish when you really look into it. I mean, it was a great show, but it had its flaws, and it was present. And I'm going to make a whole, like, breakdown video of what really happened behind the scenes and how it got into cancellation. So, will I be watching the show? Only the pilot. Do I think it's going to have a chance? Absolutely not, okay? The CW kind of is setting itself up for failure because they put it on Sundays. The only show I know that's probably good on Sundays is Once Upon a Time, and they survived to get seven seasons on ABC before being moved to Fridays in the seventh season. Oh my god, man. Let me tell you, the fact is that you had all this open spots. You just renewed a bunch of shows. You just put up a couple of pilots this year because you binged on the pilots the last two years. You just canceled a good slot, Life Sentence. So you plopped in there after moving Dynasty to Friday thinking it wasn't going to last. But the ratings stayed there for season two to get renewed. You have an open Wednesday slot after Riverdale to give the audience something more to watch after the show's over. The overall marketing of this show is just crap. It's just, oh my. I'm so heated, guys. I really am just like, this is just so disrespectful to the actual legacy of the show. Like, honestly, I get now. I'm just the mess Hall Marie Combs right now. Like, I'm expecting her to tweet about this whole dong on trailer today. But, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below on this whole reboot situation. Will you be watching? Will you not be watching? What did you think of the trailer? Let me know in the comments down below. If you grow up, peace out. More love. See y'all next week.